What is going on, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer and Kyle Kelly on our uh, Notre Dame post game show. Wow, what a crazy game! Notre Dame ends up winning it 45 to 24. We're going to uh, dive into all the big talking points um, from the game, uh, and, and we really want to hear from you guys. So, get in the live YouTube chat if you're watching um, live with us, of course, uh, and if you're listening back via podcast. Um, or a replay of our YouTube show. Really appreciate you as well. Just let us know um, what you thought about this game. Um, Kyle, I'll start. This was a very uh, gritty, sloppy game. You had the weather delay. This was a tough place to play. A noon kickoff that ended up in the game ends what, past 5 p.m. Eastern time, a really good NC State coaching staff, a Notre Dame team that struggled with penalties. Now, if you want to blame Notre Dame for them or you want to blame the refereeing, I'm sure that we'll hear from you guys on that. Um, I'm sure the comments will be very um, anti-refereeing, and that's fine. But Notre Dame made big plays and got out of there with a 21-point victory. Are you kidding me, Kyle? What were your initial reactions from that game? As this game kind of went on, I think it was becoming a matter of whichever team made the least amount of mistakes won. And I think Notre Dame did that. I, let, let's not fool ourselves. This was not a perfect victory by Notre Dame by any means. I mean, I know they won 45-24. Uh, NC State had a late touchdown there to make the score a little bit more respectable. But uh, this this wasn't really a pretty third quarter for Notre Dame or not a great second half. Uh, you know, Sam Hartman had the fumble, which was a bit of a concern. Obviously, there was a, a number of penalties and some undisciplined ones as well. Uh, first one that comes to mind was the one on ben Benjamin Morrison on the sideline after the play, which I will note that I forget the the wide receiver for NC State there. I actually think it was a tight end, but he made some sort of move on uh, Morrison first. And then, of course, Morrison, the retaliator, he was the one that got flagged. That's something you learn growing up, is if you're the guy retaliating, that's the guy the ref's right. going to go after. So, yeah, as you know, kind of just summarizing, this, this was going to be a matter of whichever team made the least amount of mistakes, and Notre Dame capitalized in a big way late with interceptions from D.J. Brown, Xavier Watts, Benjamin Morrison had one earlier um, before the safety interceptions. He almost had another one. So Notre Dame capitalized on NC State's mistakes, and that's why we're talking about Fighting Irish being 3-0. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For folks wondering where Tim Hyde was, uh, he, he was coaching today, so he was – um, not going to be on the show today. It was going to be Todd Burlidge joining me, um, but Todd, with the delay of what was it, 105 minutes, I believe, uh, Blue and Gold Tyler Horka tweeted out it was, um, who, and he was of course in Raleigh for the game. Todd had th this ran into some other uh, engagements that Todd had, so I called up Kyle. I think it was at halftime. Said, "Hey, Kyle, can you do the show?" Uh, <laughs> and here we are. So, Kyle, appreciate your time, um, and. Uh, yeah, if Jay Carr is here, Jay Carr, I did finally, finally shave for you, brother. That was something, a bet from the Navy game, and I finally did. So there you go, Mike Singer without the uh, the goatee, but we got a little shadow coming in. Okay, back to the game. Sam Hartman, 15-24, 286 yards, four touchdowns for like a, oh man, he, you know, he had the fumble early on. It wasn't pretty. If people are going to say that was a struggle game for Sam Hartman, give me Sam Hartman's struggle game all of the time. I mean, goodness gracious. Um, uh, you know, Holden Stace had the great game. But for me, Kyle, and look, Audra Gestime had the 80-yard run. But for me, the, the talking point of this game is the Notre Dame defense. It was freaking outstanding. And look, did they give up some plays to... Of course, I mean, you, of course the other team is going to move the ball. They're, they're going to put some points on the board. I mean, this NC State team is not a, just a, a team of scrubs. But for Notre Dame to hold them under 84 yards with that Brennan Armstrong, you know, everyone talked about how big of a threat he was with his legs, 26 yards from him. Um, and I think he was only sacked once. 
So it's not like Notre Dame had a bunch of sacks on him, and that's why he had such little to do in the run game in terms of yardage. And then Notre Dame forcing three turnovers. How about this, Kyle? I tweeted this. Um, so Watts interception leads to a Notre Dame touchdown. Hartman finds Davis Sherwood on that good old spider two wide banana. Appreciate Greg McElroy for, for shouting that out. Notre Dame takes a 31 17 lead. Actually, this is the wrong tweet. Give me a second. Let's find the right one now. Okay. My bad. Listeners, right. uh, in case you're wondering, uh, Mike has revealed that he is our uh, tweet guy during the game yes, from the BGI I, account. So I'm the, all mis- I'm the tweet misspellings, guy. incorrect stats, th- those are on him. There you go. I, I I hope I was good today. But okay, so estimate scores, right? This is what I tweeted. With 255 left in the third quarter, Notre Dame was up 24 to 17. With 1042 left in the fourth quarter, so that's what five minutes of, of game time or so? 38 to 17 lead. What a flip of the script from that tight game when Hartman fumbled. What was it? So Hartman fumbles. Where is it? Here. I mean, that I think that was, yeah, Notre Dame was up 24-17. Hartman fumbles. NC State misses that field goal attempt, right? They could have, that could have been a tie game right there at the end of the third quarter. And then ever since that missed field goal, Notre Dame just blew out NC State. What just a wild game. Um, Huge. I just think this is a big win for Notre Dame, man. I mean, it was kind of nervy. You had the weather delay. I'm pretty hyped up, Kyle. Are you matching my hype or uh, not as much? So I, I'm still trying to kind of go through my thoughts of yeah. this game. But the one thing that I just keep coming back to, I think this is a game that Sam Hartman one for Notre Dame. I'm not sure if you have Drew Pine or another inexperienced quarterback like last year, if Notre Dame can pull this one out. Like you just look at last year against the USC game, Drew Pine played super well for the most part, but there were a couple different mistakes. And uh, obviously Notre Dame fell in that matchup. You know, the Stanford loss obviously, um, you know, kind of points out. But this is a game where, you know, Sam Hartman, Notre Dame's first real test at a place that Hartman has not really succeeded right. at. And ironically, the last time North Carolina State surrendered 45 points in their home stadium was when Sam Hartman and Wake Forest came to town a few years ago. So that's credit to Notre Dame, uh, the Athletic Communications Office. They tweeted that out. So how ironic is that? Is it, That also might have been the first time Sam Hartman uh, – came to Riley, uh, Raleigh for the that game um, on the road. Now putting the finishing touches on his final appearance there. And as you mentioned, just a, a pretty um, outstanding stat line, finishing 15 of 24, 286 yards and four touchdowns. And I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mess, um, mention that Holden stays, helped Sam Hartman out quite a bit with, uh, that long touchdown uh, reception, the final one in the game. Then, of course, right. the the earlier one uh, where he ran down the sidelines and into the end zone. Holden Stays was outstanding today. Four receptions, 115 yards, and two touchdowns. Just kind of reflecting a little bit on what we saw from in fall camp from Sam Hartman, I just had always put in the back of my mind that it, it was specifically in the red zone where Hartman was really looking at Holden Stays. But I had always thought this looks like a guy that he's going to lean on and rely on. And we found that in the most critical moments of this game in Holden Stays, this was his breakout coming out party as a, a member of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Yep, good stuff. Uh, this is that tweet you you mentioned. The 45 points by Notre Dame football today are the most since NC State, uh, since 2021 when Wake Forest, of course, uh, like you said. Oh, so it was, it was in Winston-Salem. That's my mistake. Okay. So not in rally. Yeah. Regardless. Um, and now regardless effort by Hartman. Yeah, you do you do love to see that. Um speaking of something we love to see, um, and it, I love to see our sponsors over at My Perfect Franchise. Um, and and maybe, just maybe, if you're you're listening to this, you might just be a displaced corporate executive. Maybe you're wanting to put your career 
in your own hands while our friend Andy Ludicky over at MyPerfectFranchise.net can give you a call. Or, or he, you give him a call, he'll help you out. And he's a huge call sports fan and a franchise veteran having owned multiple franchises and businesses. Using his expertise, he helps others find their American dream through a very thorough consultation and evaluation process. Give Andy a call. Put your life and career in your own hands. And best of all, his services are 100% free to use. So what do you have to lose? Find your perfect franchise at myperfectfranchise.net. A uh, few comments I wanted to pop up real quick. Uh, Tyler Buckner's little brother says, Mike, where's Tim? Is Tim leaving us? No. Uh, like I said earlier, Tim is, uh, he was coaching today. So um, Tim Tim was off this week. Um, so Tim, will, you guys will see Tim on Wednesday. Uh, Luke says, uh, wow, Mike, who's your barber? You look beautiful. Thank you very much, Luke. I will keep that a secret for now. Oh, just, uh, just more Mike Singer compliments here. Lots to Andrew says lots to learn, from, but take a 21 point W on the road. Completely agree with you, Andrew. Someone on our blue and gold.com message board, by the way, love all of our members of blue and gold. Um, someone was like late in the game. was like, Jake just dropped my mic. We're okay. Uh, someone says JD Bertrand's got to go. He, he He's not good at blitzing. I'm like, guys, I get the critiques, but just he, not right now. I mean, not when Notre Dame just put on that performance, like time and place for everything. You take the 21 point win on the road. Completely agree. Joe, regarding the the refereeing decisions, he says, hey, those were good calls. We need to be more disciplined. Like the Jaden Greathouse one on the little rub route, dude, he just straight up went and pushed him. Like that was a very obvious one. Like maybe there were some iffy calls, but. For me, I thought it was more Notre Dame being undisciplined than the referees, you know, having, um, you know, money on on NC State or something ridiculous. Uh, Ian Book, excuse me, I mean, Josh uh, Buffo, the motivational business banker, says secondary looks great. Love it. I mean, how about DJ Brown making strength some strength plays? Of defense secondary today. Ben Morrison drops a pick, then picks one off. Christian Gray looked good there late. I mean, Thomas Harper. If I if I had to give a defensive MVP, I think it's Thomas Harper. I, I thought he was outstanding, um, and uh, he led the way um, for Notre Dame with seven tackles, three of them being solo, and he had two pass breakups, both of them being on third downs. Now I think the next play on one of them was a um, was, was the false start that NC State was able to extend the drive, but still, I can't take that away from him. I thought Thomas Harper was everywhere and looked outstanding. And I think the comment so the best comment so far has been from Daddy O here. So we have to stop complaining every time things aren't perfect or wrong. This is football. Whenever you can get a 21 point win against a FBS quality opponent on the road and bad weather, be happy. Hell to the yes, Daddy O. Uh, completely agree there. Like, ah. I'm 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 juiced here. How many touchdowns is that for Hartman through the first three games? Do you, do you know off the top of your head? He well, he led twelve of like thirteen touchdown drives coming into this, but that included Notre Dame's offenses rushing touchdowns. Um, I know he had four passing touchdowns coming into this against the Blitz. That's a really random stat, but I was kind of doing some research on that just in case we brought that up. Uh, later but yeah i mean he had um the two to great house against navy um obviously for today so it's got to be hovering right right there around 10 touchdowns i hope you're looking it up while i uh ad lib right now but yeah, yeah yes yeah. yeah no no Sam i was Park. not looking up i was reading the comments this is the beautiful Even thing better. about this is the beautiful thing about football right drew says totally a disagree about the secondary thought the safeties were awful at Armstrong. I, I thought the safeties played well today. Yeah. Armstrong threw three picks, two of them to Notre Dame safeties and Brown and Watts, 47% completion percentage. Um, But then you also have Kevin. Kevin thinks the safety showed out. I think the safeties played really well. So it's interesting that, you know, you, you can watch the same game and see different things. Um, But uh, yeah, just going through some talking points, Kyle. Um. Some some notes on the game, some things that you uh, thought as you as you were watching it. Yeah, I mean we can just continue on the safeties a little bit. Um, DJ Brown five tackles, Xavier Watts three tackles, Ramon Henderson 
uh, three tackles as well. And one thing that I just kind of noticed about them is they made some big plays near near the line of scrimmage. I know DJ Brown had one early. Xavier Watts had one uh, late in the game in the fourth quarter. I think he had a pass breakup or there was a really big play right before his interception. So, I mean, you just look at the stat sheet. Um, NC State, they uh, they let Brent, Brennan Armstrong air it out today. I mean, that, that secondary got tested all day long. Uh, this was not an easy game for those Notre Dame defensive backs. I'll tell you what, when Cam Hart and uh, Benjamin Morrison wake up tomorrow, or probably coming off that field, they're probably uh, a little spent because they they uh, had a, a tough duty today. Um, I, I thought, you know, just keeping along with the secondary, Benjamin Morrison, another outstanding game. I, Cam Harden got tested a few times, and it was – it, it was a really interesting dynamic because, like, this Notre Dame secondary really hadn't been tested until today. You know, obviously the opponents that Notre Dame played coming in today, Navy, Tennessee State, those were both, you know, blowout wins. Uh, so this was a, the first real test against another six-year quarterback on their sideline. And, um, you know, Sam, like I mentioned, Cam Hart gave up, like, one big play, but I ended up not being a big deal. So I, I just thought the secondary was was a strength t- today, especially when you um, – all things considered. And just one one note on Thomas Harper, I felt like those seven tackles came because Brennan Armstrong was, like, targeting him pretty frequently. And he didn't learn his lesson. Uh, you know, those two pass breakups that you mentioned on third down, those were huge. Uh, but overall, just summarizing, I, I think you can be pretty pleased about learning from a win rather than a loss. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My boy Kevin says, I called 42-17 pretty close. I just really, I'm having a hard time looking at this this final score of 45-24. to And really, I mean, that was a garbage time touchdown for NC State. I mean, so let's just say it ends up being 45-17, like, it really is is a uh, a wild scoreline. Um, for folks joining us, please do hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. I was looking before the game started, and even tweeted out we were at twenty two thousand um, nine hundred eighty nine subscribers, um, and uh, we just passed that. We are now at 23,014. So I was just hoping to pop these, these analytics on and see we got to 23,000 and, and we pass it by 14. So thank you everyone getting us to 23,000 subscribers on YouTube. When we started doing this real, like really launching our YouTube channel at blue and gold, I would say three years ago. I mean, we really started to get into it at the fall of 2020 um we were at like 3000 subscribers something like that and now we are at 23000 um so it's absolutely a uh, fantastic appreciate the support from everyone uh jonesy 23 with a $5 super chat really appreciate it um he says guys great win and i am extremely happy do we have cause for concern on the o line seemed very leaky Kyle i see you nodding your head any thoughts here yeah i'm glad you brought that up um you know, I don't think Blake Fisher had a great start uh, to the game. I know the first couple of series were a struggle. It was hard to – I didn't really pay much attention to Blake Fisher in the second half because I was pretty much keyed in on the interior of the offensive line. I know uh, Greg McElroy highlighted a, a mistake about Zeke Carell on a attempted blitz pickup that uh, one of uh, NC State's defenders snuck right by him and sacked Hartman. Um, I, I thought the interior of the offensive line overall kind of struggled today. It, Notre Dame didn't really, but aside from the Audric Estime uh, eighty-yard touchdown, I, I think that become came you know down the tunnel uh, in between the uh, tackles. But as, aside from that, I would, was a little underwhelmed by the play of the the interior guys. It seemed like Notre Dame just struggled to to get through. Um, through the lanes there and the interior all game, run the ball. It, it seemed like they were more successful uh, getting outside the tackles. I, I know Jadarian Price had a couple good runs, Jeremiah Love um, as well. So, yeah, it, it was interesting because I, I thought after week one against Navy, we we're pr- feeling pretty confident about Pat Coogan and Rocco Spindler. Then last week, 
Um, we're a little bit more cautious. Uh, and now, you know, kind of first real test has kind of been the theme of this uh, post game episode is, uh, you know, NC State. And, you know, they, they have a pretty good uh, defensive front. And I think they kind of got the better of the Notre Dame's three interior guys today. So Notre Dame will be able to bounce back next week in Central Michigan. They should should be fine there. And um, obviously the big one comes to town uh, the week after that. So, yeah, it, not not the best of performances by those three interior guys. But, yeah. For for folks wondering what Tim Hyde is thinking right now, he texted me, damn it, I picked 31-17, oh, so close. And that's when Notre Dame was up 38-17. And he said two weeks to hype up a top-10 battle in prime time coming to South Bend. All I've wanted for nine months is coming true. And of course, tomorrow night, um, actually, let me text school speech just to make sure you good for tomorrow night show. 8 p.m. Mike just well, name wait. dropping right here. Just texting a former Notre Dame captain like it's nothing. It is nothing. It's just schools. Yeah, it's just schools. Kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time, excuse me, 7 p.m. Central time, 8 p.m. Eastern time um, with Ghouls B. Hopefully he gets back to me so I can confirm that. Uh, but pr I'm pretty darn sure that we'll be able to do that with Ghouls B tomorrow. So what he has to say about Hartman, I'm really looking forward to because there was some, like, someone just said, um, yeah, Rick Rick, it was a 7.5 point spread there, I believe. But someone Comfortably said. Comfortably covered. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just by a little bit, right? The slow start scares me. I thought, man, NC State's game plan there early was we're going to crowd the box, stop the run, and make Hartman and these receivers beat us deep. Uh, Goolsby says should be good, so we'll, we'll count on him there. Uh, and it looks like it was going to work there. And then Notre Dame had that little 12-play, 50-yard drive capped off with a hats off to Spencer Schrader knocking through, what is it, 54 yards on that, uh, on that field goal. Um, Notre that Dame record. Kinda, Notre Dame record, yeah. That kind of got Notre Dame's offense settled into the game. Um, thankfully, the Irish defense stood up to the task, too. And then you get the delay and then estimate that 80-yard touchdown run to put Notre Dame up 10-0. I'm thinking to myself, Notre Dame does not look very good right now, and they're up 10-0 on the road. This is phenomenal. Um, and I think that cushion kind of helped them throughout the game obviously and then you just and then you, you you get those picks and you just pour you just pour on there so um yeah jonesy again appreciate the super chat uh trash said i think this might be the first time trash ever just posted a comment and had it not be a super chat trash I always appreciate your support he says can someone explain the intentional grounding to me and Leo here basically did explain it. He says, if you're the second person to touch the ball, remember on the flea flicker, the outside the tackle box exception doesn't apply. So Leo, appreciate the uh, the explanation there. Uh, ND fan says, I am pleased with the game overall. Our secondary was outstanding. It, it, it really was. And all my time covering Notre Dame, really up until this year and midway through last year when Morrison really came onto the scene, the issue for Notre Dame's defense has been the secondary, and it's just a totally different team now um, with how good the secondary is. Do you want to talk about the linebackers at all, Kyle? I know you were pretty impressed with Marist and, and thought he was flying all over the place. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad uh, you know, people are agreeing with me with the secondary there because I you know, thought those guys played well. You know, Just keep harping on that, but... Was impressed by Maris Leofau's play today. I, I think I put on our message board. I think he's been a top three player on this defense. Obviously, Benjamin Morrison's in there um, as well, but I, I'm just really impressed by him uh, today. I'm looking at his stats here. He had five tackles, uh, two of those being solo, tackle for loss, and quarterback hurry. So, or it might be quarterback hit. I forget how they classify that on the uh, stats. I believe it actually is quarterback hit, but I think Maris had the strongest performance among Notre Dame's linebackers. I'll, I'll be really interested to hear Goolsby's we saw it tomorrow yeah. on that because he's the expert there with the linebackers, but I, I did key in on uh, J.D. Bertrand a little bit. I, I know Greg McElroy mentioned earlier in the broadcast that Notre Dame was running a spy on Brennan Armstrong uh, using Bertrand a, a few times. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I just found a little bit odd is there was a couple of times Bertrand got beat due to his pursuit angles. He just kind of ran by the defenders and um, gave up a, a couple extra yards. So that, that was a little concerning there, but it, 
and it was Ben don't break, you know, there was no big plays given up uh, as a result of that. As far as Jack Kaiser, um, I know he had a, a pretty outstanding stat line, you know, six tackles that was second on the team, uh, three solo stops, and then a uh, quarterback hit as well. Obviously he had the kind of like the brain fart on the, I think it was a it was a punt block. Yeah. I don't know if punt block was a call, but Notre Dame had their punt return unit out there. And I, I noticed before the play, there seemed to be some sort of miscommunication. They were shuffling guys around. I think Junior Tui Halamaka, Kaiser placed him opposite of him. And then, you know, I don't know if Kaiser got caught up in everything, just wasn't really paying attention to the the snap count and, you know, the ball obviously going under center there. So I think that may have been the result. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing some a little bit more of the advanced metrics, but I, I think of the the three, you know, those core guys, those grad students, Marisley Fowl had the best game today. Yeah, we've been talking about the safeties. Mark with a two dollar super chat, really appreciate. It. He says the corners were terrific. Um, man, when Ben Morrison dropped that pick, I was like, man, he's got to, um, he's got to make that. But then, uh, like I said earlier, he he made up for it um w- w- with an interception um and it was a really nice coverage um as well um uh, Kyle I'm going to uh, just kind of go through um some of my notes from the game that I-, I I took um one thing was I don't know if you noticed but it was on one and, and ESPN showcased it and I don't remember what running back it was but there was a counter play to the left where I think it was Fisher one of the tight ends and then Jaden Thomas all pull to the left. And Jaden Thomas, being a wide receiver who is pulling and making an impact on a block, right, on our, on our run play, who does that – guys, does anyone re- – like th- think of like receivers who are impactful in the blocking game. And I'm not talking about 30 yards down the field. I'm talking about in the box. Larry Fitzgerald com- comes to mind. Larry Fitzgerald, that big-bodied receiver – right? Who can kind of come in and help you as an H back to me, Jaden Thomas, like that's his style of play. Now, obviously you Karens No, I am not saying Jaden Thomas is Larry Fitzgerald. I am just saying like Jaden Thomas kind of has that style of play. I love Jaden Thomas. I thought, I mean, his stat line, let's see. Was, uh, he didn't have a catch. He didn't have a catch. But that stood out to me. Jaden Thomas will be fine. Um, he's going to catch some passes. Speaking of catching passes, how about Tobias Merriweather with the 45 yarder? Um, and I believe he was um, targeted. Yeah, he had an eight yard pass that was then, of course, called back to the heart or the great house little, you know, rub thing. But how about that Merriweather catch and run in some traffic? Wasn't crazy traffic, Kyle, but. It's nice to see Merriweather break off a 45-yarder. Yeah, I was happy to see Notre Dame get the ball in his hands. I think that's a guy they just got to find ways to get involved, build his confidence up. You know, he had kind of a poor end to to last season, not or not a poor end, but an unfortunate end to last season, you know, with dealing with a concussion for the latter part of the season. I can't remember if he played in the bowl game. I think he did re- reappear, but – uh, you know, he's still a young guy, a guy that enrolled back in the spring, and he's starting to find his stride. And, you know, I think the biggest thing for him is just getting involved. And yeah, I, I would have to say that 45-yard pickup has to be a confidence booster. Yeah, for sure. Uh, lot, lots of comments on my shave face. I don't like it, but, you know, whatever my wife says, that's what we'll go with. Uh, David, yeah, as much as – you know, the, the high majority of middle-aged men on here, uh, even though you guys might love it, I'm going to go with my wife, but I really do appreciate the comments. David with the $2 super chat, really appreciate it. He says winning on the road is never easy. Look at Clemson losing on the road to Duke. How did Clemson end up doing in this game, by the way, in their, in their contest? So, oh, okay. Yeah. That they was up a, away. yeah, a t- 24, 17 game at halftime. Clemson wins 66 to 17. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Boy, um, they did. Dabo Sweeney and that program needed that second half like you wanted to leave. Seriously. People are talking about Clemson being down and like, man, 
we'll see about this year. But last year, I think they went 10 and three. Like, man, if that's a down year, that's a pretty good season. By the way, I was looking at when Notre Dame was struggling in the first half and, and, and whatnot. I was thinking, like, I feel like NC State upset. Like, if you go back and look at NC State's their, their past few years, they win against a lot of good teams. Like, I just really don't want people to underestimate how of impressive that I, I think this was a really, really nice win. Nice result for Notre Dame, but also a nice showing for the Fighting Irish. Um, you know, considering considering all that happened in the game. Uh, Trash with a super chat. Appreciate you, my friend. He says, "Part of me feels that both teams were following a script, as if the rain was coming, yeah. as if the rain was coming down. Yes. If it was coming down, I believe it would have looked like that." You you're talking about like just kind of that just very gritty game and because our dude in the second half was like the sun is shining this is beautiful football weather right uh look at good mike like and subscribe appreciate your trash did you have any thoughts kyle yes i do because i felt early on notre dame leaned way too much into the weather they were just trying to punch it in between the tackles and that's when the um kind of issue running running um in the interior uh kind of showed itself and that ended up becoming a a theme of the game i thought Notre Dame just kind of overthought that one, that they were just going to keep the ball on the ground and ground and pound in between the tackles. And, uh, yeah, especially early in that first, what was it, 15 minutes in the first quarter. I think you got about five minutes worth of that second quarter, 20 minutes minutes of game time. I just I – don't, I don't think that – I, or I think that Notre Dame was just kind of overthinking it. They settled in on that third drive, um, kind of got going – Unfortunately, that ended in a field goal rather than a touchdown, but got points on the board, put Notre Dame at 3 nothing. But, uh, yeah, it was just um, – I think they leaned in into it too much, were a little too cautious, and once they came out of the locker room, gave that ball to SMA, he went the other direction, and, you know, everything started to kind of come together from there. Yeah, Timothy wants to know, is anyone covering the post-game press conference? Uh, we are not because we're doing this show, but our, our co-workers at blueandgold.com are. Um, Marcus Freeman, quote from him in the press conference, said, we're a good team. I don't know what the ceiling is for this team, but I think it's high. Um, Tyler Horka tweeted, Marcus Freeman confirms Notre Dame players were eating hot dogs during the weather delay. He said coaches indulged too, but Freeman specifically did not have any, quote, I'm going to have some now, though. So, Marcus Freeman, breaking news, eating hot dogs um, post game. So, there you go. Uh, a couple comments here. Mike says, we absolutely lose this game the last two years. Probably, right? And he also That's adds, Hartman, yeah. is, Hartman is dreaming. But, yeah, on, on this comment, and then I want to get to Hartman, Kyle. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of putting these two together. That's kind of what I was trying to articulate earlier that, um, you know, without Sam Hartman, I think this is a game Notre Dame probably be tough to to pull through. I can't remember. So Jack Cohn was – would have been two years ago, so yep. 2021, right? So, I don't know. I mean, Jack, Jack Cohn was super respectable in his own right, um, but you feel way, way more confident in Sam Hartman going in there and – the pull pull out that performance was just, you know, that's that's a veteran quarterback that you, you know, not paid for, but you know, brought to Notre Dame, and that's a guy that you love to have in that win. Who do you lo- like for all right for Notre Dame fans? What do we want to see, right? What do we want to see in the passing game? Big chunk explosive plays. How about forty five yards to Merriweather? 65 yards to Chris Tyree. Hold hold the thought on Chris Tyree. We're going to talk about him. Um, BC just dropped a super chat on it, literally, as, as I'm talking about it. So we'll, we'll talk about that very shortly. Hartman to stays, 28 yards. Hartman to stays, 40 yards and a touchdown. Hartman to stays. This was kind of in, I mean, midway through the fourth quarter. Game was kind of put away, but 35-yard touchdown. Um, big chunk plays through the passing game, you you need those explosive plays. And, of course, we'll count estimates 80-yard touchdown in that explosive play category um, as well. Um, we'll get to the, a couple super chat that BC super, super chat real quick. I want to comment on the Hartman thing. Mike says Hartman is still dreamy. Um, of course he is. But how about Hartman? Did you see 
I, I don't really watch college game day anymore. Um, not because of some stance I have against college game day. I'm just usually doing stuff to, to knock some things out in the mornings uh, on game days. Do you see Hartman did a little post game or excuse me, the pregame interview he was walking up the sideline. Do you see that Kyle? I sure did. I, I actually really like that, especially because Pat McAfee was involved. That guy is uh, one of the most entertaining guys in sports media. But so I think they have started doing that, you know, reaching some of the players on the field. But okay. the one thing that came to mind, I'm almost positive. I think it was a, the day before or the day of the USC game. Um, they interviewed Marcus Freeman after he got done jogging off the beach um, in Southern California before the USC game. That was an early morning on the West Coast, but college game day got a hold of him uh, before the game. So they do the certain live interviews and things like that. And I think getting those guys on the field pregame is um, another spin off it. And uh, Sam Hartman's a, a guy with a personality that you, you would love to have your listeners key in on. Yeah. Mike says, going to watch the Pat McAfee alternate broadcast for Texas games. Um, in our Wednesday show, I made the point of why can't Notre Dame kind of be QB transfer you. And I'm not sure I've really put my full thoughts together on that. Like if that's a good thing for Notre Dame, like if Notre Dame doesn't believe what they have in their quarterback room after this season is adequate enough and they want to go bring in a, a top, another top transfer, um, like, yeah, I, I, again, I haven't really really fully put together <laughs> if I think that that's a good idea or not, but I think like the NIL Sam's done. I mean, just he's that, that pregame interview. When I saw that, I was like, he's just continuing to build his brand. And I think that might be a good thing. Kind of putting this thought together here that you're, you're building yourself as a potential really interesting place for. Um, future transfer quarterbacks to come here. Do you see the comments from um whose dad was it? Was it Caleb Williams' dad made those comments about if he gets so m- I I can't remember. I think I'm paraphrasing this correctly when I say if he gets so much nil money, he he might just come back for another year. Is that what he said, Kyle? Something like that. I I thought he it, his stance was more about if they didn't like the team that okay. ended oh, up yeah, yeah, the yeah, first yeah. overall pick. Yeah, so, yeah. So I mean, obviously nil is a part of that. I mean, I'm. Th- starting to get a little bit sick of seeing Caleb Williams in the Heisman house commercials. So he's involved in NIL, but yeah, I think his dad's stance was more dependent on how the NFL right. draft order okay. shakes out. Yeah. 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 You're, you're definitely correct. And he would come back, but also he could make so much, he could even make so much money in NIL. And that's obviously something that Hartman took into huge account to going to Notre Dame. There's just something there for Notre Dame to kind of use Hartman as the template for future big time grad transfer quarterbacks. Uh, I, I think it's really interesting. Um, so I don't know. We'll see, but uh, yeah. T- TF says I miss Tim, but Kyle's great again, folks. Tim will be back Wednesday. He was coaching today. Um, and then we we're going to have Todd Burla, John, but the delay of the game um, due to the weather, Todd had some other plans he had to get to. So I called up Kyle and Kyle was available. Um, okay. No call on Hartman getting his head ripped off. Um, that was weird. It was weird. It, it, so I don't think you could have flagged it as a horse collar because I think with a horse collar, you have to actually like get underneath the, the shoulder pads and, you know, kind of pull him down by it. It's gotta be kind of that motion. Wasn't a face mask. I can't remember if they have like a hit to the head penalty. I just think it was too close of a call. It was near the neck area, weird. upper shoulder pads. It was just a, it was a weird play, weird tackle. It, it, I I think that's a play that depending on the um, the officiating crew, they, you know, some some crews will probably call that a different way. So, is it? It's the one where they like yeah. went under his face mask or, or under his helmet. Sorry, yeah. Like, it's one of those it, things it, like that. It looks was like- a, yeah. It looks like a penalty, but I guess it wasn't. I don't know. It was like that's your that's a good way of putting it. it up. It was weird. So that's a good way of putting it, though. It looked like a penalty, but I don't think like under the letter of the law that you yeah. can. So two receptions for sixty-eight yards for Chris Tyree. 
uh, on both of his targets, the one going for 65 yards. It was a three-man rush by NC State. Hartman, I, th- I, he, he rolled to his right, not really because of pressure. I think it was more of just to help him find a receiver. Uh, and then NC State lost Chris Tyree, who then, yeah, runs for another, what, 45, 50 yards or so. Might have been Chris like 65. Has, yeah, yeah, 65 total. I was, I was looking at that big, big play pickup. Right, right. So 65 yards, but I'm, I'm saying like he might have caught it 15 yards down the field and ran for right. another 40. Yeah. Um, Tyree had the nice reception on the corner out last week. I thought Tyree as a slot receiver for Notre Dame would be a lot more dink and dunk. He's just a he's just a good slot receiver to me. I I am really liking him um, in that role now. Personally, when Notre Dame goes twelve personnel and they have both receivers on the right side of the field, you saw that a lot. You had JT at the bottom of your screen, and then Tobias in the slot. I did I would like a few times. You saw that, yeah. I would like to see Great House or Tyree in the slot there. That's just me personally. I think those two guys can just offer a little bit more right now. I want to see more Chris Tyree and Jaden Thomas on that. Oof. It wasn't the perfect ball from from Hartman on that Jaden Greathouse touchdown. Um, he could have let it a little bit more in front of him, but just that play, that was just all of that was beautiful. I'm very excited. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm very excited about this result for Notre Dame. Do you have any thoughts, Kyle, before we get on to the next Super Chat? I want to mention because I, I was kind of – not taking a victory lap in my head, but I was proud of myself for this comparison. But this NC State game felt a lot like the Syracuse game last year. And if I'm not mistaken, um, that was Notre Dame's first game on the road against an ACC environment or ACC opponent. A weird environment where mm-hmm. s- that Syracuse game was uh, played in the Carrier Dome. Everyone was kind of cautious because that was a week after a big game. I forget which one. Um, uh- no, well, it was after UNLV. Okay, sorry. So that's when Notre Dame was starting to win, <laughs> so most importantly. And first year head coach under Marcus Freeman going on the road, ACC opponent, weird environment, hostile environment, if you want to uh, classify it that way. And Notre Dame just, they steamrolled Syracuse. Yeah. This year, Notre Dame did not get hit off to nearly as a fast start as they did last year against Syracuse, but same theme again. You know, Notre Dame. First ACC opponent on the road, NC State. Same offensive coordinator on the opposing sidelines and Robert and I, both games. Notre Dame uh, hold, holds them to under 25 points in both outings and I think some garbage t- time touchdowns for both opponents in each one of those wins. So that that's kind of how I f- thought of this game in my head and hopefully uh, we don't compare uh, Central Michigan to Marshall. I think that'll be more like UNLV. So. <laughs> I, I, I hope so. Yeah, that UNLV game, I didn't get to watch that one last year. And I think I watched the replay. I think, yeah, I did the next morning, but I was uh, I was out and about that weekend. I was off. Um, but, yeah, hopefully. Because, like I talk about folks like who, who wanted to downplay Navy and Tennessee State, two bad teams, but so were Marshall and Stanford last year in our name lost. So uh, that's why I'm just thrilled about this 3-0 start, top 10 team. Um, in the in the fighting Irish, uh, Michael with the super chat really appreciate you. Ten bucks here he says weird. All three games have started really slow. Uh, adjustments made and that worked. Coaching makes a difference. What do you think? Not gonna lie, when I see the super chat of of three think all three games started slow. My initial reaction is I don't care too much about the start if this is how they're gonna finish. That, that's my initial reaction. Now, I'm not saying you don't want to come out of the gate strong, but I think we talked earlier about um, the whole Notre Dame was kind of feeling them out with the weather early in the game. That's that's I, I agree with Kyle's point on that, and I think the Super Trash posted that Super Chat earlier. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it was, it was 12 to 13 touchdowns for Hartman, right, in the first two games, so I don't – they didn't really start to or scoring drives, not touchdown drives, or score, just scoring drives. Um, yes, well, no, it was touchdown drives because the one drive, I, I think, don't quote me on this, but I, I think the one drive that wasn't missed a touchdown goal. was what? No, I think it 
was a converted field goal. I'm going to bring it, bring up the stat right now just right. so we can uh, Get the correct be stat accurate for that. about it. Yes. But that's honestly my – I don't know if that's a good point, but to me, you start slow, you make the adjustment. The adjustment's the most important thing and then how they finished. So that's that's my uh, – that's my answer. Got that. All right, here we go. I got our um, stat. It's okay. uh, Sam Bartman has started twelve drives, and eleven of those ended in touchdowns. So okay, it was eleven. So okay. can't, can't remember what the one was, but I think it was a field goal. I don't know the outcome of that field goal, but I think I it was a say successful it was, one. Yeah. By the way, so Hartman threw four touchdowns against Navy, two against Tennessee State. So that's obviously six. So he's at. Ten touchdowns through the first three games. Uh, my good friend Tim Hyde, I think, said fifteen. He thought Hartman would be at fifteen touchdowns through the first four games, so probably won't get there unless he just goes crazy against Central Michigan, which he could. Um, but yeah, for a rocky start for Hartman, right? Let me let me pull up the let me pull up Hartman's stats here, and this is like by play, right? So, a completion to Great House was his first. Incomplete, incomplete, incomplete. Right? So, he starts the game one of four and then gets, you know, and then starts to get into that rhythm, like we mentioned earlier on that field goal drive. And then just look, I mean, look at all these, these completions and touchdowns here. Forget a little bit of a shaky start for how hot he got um, later in the game. Yeah, absolutely love to see it. Um, Mike says, I like Kyle. Will says Kyle's crushing it. And JL says, love Kyle. Kyle's doing a great job. Got to, got to shut up my Let's boy. Go. Lux says, uh, that deep ball to JT was so nice. I can't believe you dropped it. Yeah. You know what guys? I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you guys. When Hartman was struggling early, I was just thinking to myself, I gotta listen to cool as we talk about Hartman struggling tomorrow. And one of those three incompletions that I just popped on the screen, right, where he went one and four to start the game, was the drop to Jaden Thomas. That beautiful ball over the outside of his shoulder down the field um, was a thing of beauty. Um, and then uh, it was it was a tough catch, but definitely one that uh, Thomas needs to make. So, um, so yeah, just going through my. Uh, my notes here. Um, yeah, talked about Harper. Very happy about Merriweather on that 45 yard catch. Um, Tyree was very happy to see that 65 yarder that he'd had. And then that drive was capped off by the Hartman to Great House. Just a, a beaut. Um, yeah, Kyle, look at your notes. Anything else you wanted to discuss? Actually, yeah, Kyle, can I can I have you hold those thoughts real quick? Sure can. Because we need to hear from the amazing Augie's locker room. Notre Dame's off to a 3-0 start. You're going to come to town either for the Central Michigan or Ohio State game, Notre Dame fans. And when you do, you've got to make time for Augie's locker room. They have the wide selection of Notre Dame stadium pieces, jerseys, helmets, autographs and one-of-a-kind rocking items you can find exclusive joe montana signed items and famous sculpture jerry mckenna's replicas of the bronze statues around the stadium and augie gets new stuff all of the time and if he doesn't have it in store he's going to go out and find it for you visit augie at 1811 south bend avenue and see the vintage helmet display dating back to 1890 he's got amazing items you're going to want to see visit augie's locker room dot com give him a call 574-277-6363 574-277-6363 kyle the floor is yours again my friend thank you yeah um uh, just gonna glance through my notes I, I think we talked um a lot about everything i the one thing uh, just a couple random notes like if i was writing a, a notebook column these would be things I like pile in at the end that aren't major talking points, but things just to mention um, throughout, throughout the game. I thought Bryce McPherson did an outstanding job. Yep. Uh, that guy's got an NFL leg. I put that on the, the message board. I That ball just comes off his foot different. And I, I kind of want to bring up the stats just to see what he finished with because I know he had a couple boots well over 50 yards. So checking into that now. 
Uh, Bryce McPherson. Yes, yeah, six punts for 304 yards. <laughs> Average of 50.7 yards. Four of those were 50-yard punts. So I thought Bryce McPherson did a, a great job in his first, like, real punting performance. Like last sure. week he had a couple. But uh, I think this one was the one where Notre Dame was playing, you know, for field position early and at different points in those games. Uh, the the defensive line play was interesting. I, I don't think we've gotten a, a lot into that because, like, mm. I thought Riley Mills had a pretty good game, but then I looked at his stats and he only had two tackles and a quarterback hit, and both those tackles were assisted ones. So I just felt like I saw him in the backfield a lot, a lot often. I think maybe that was one of those games where it's not really going to show up on the stat sheet. I just noticed him kind of clogging up that interior and kind of making it difficult on NC State to get anything going there. I thought Howard Cross in that same vein kind of had a, a pretty good game as well. He His game showed up on the stat sheet, five tackles, two of those solo. And I know our uh, colleague Jack Sobel brought up on the uh, loose emoji message board that it, when you phrase it this way, it doesn't sound like the best thing you want to hear from a defensive lineman, but Howard Cross does a really good job making tackles like downfield. So when he's being blocked, if he's more or less backpedaling, I mean, he's getting pushed back, but he's not surrendering. He's getting off those blocks super well and he's making plays. And we saw that on numerous occasions today. Uh, just looking a little bit through my notes. Um, Josh Burnham didn't really see much of him. Uh, I, I don't think we saw him at all in the first half. I saw him more in the second half. He only had uh, one tackle that was an assisted tackle. Uh, so that was a guy that, like, Notre Dame, like, he super excited about him, the way he's been playing the first two weeks, but didn't really see a whole lot of him today. As a result, you saw a lot more junior Tui Halamaka at that Viper position. He had four tackles, two solo stops. So just kind of maybe uh, Notre Dame changing it up a little bit there. I think Junior was a little banged up early on in the year. He didn't practice at like a full strength toward the end there. So those are, uh, I guess, some of my D-line thoughts, summarizing things. You know, Javante, Jean-Baptiste had a pretty good game on a stat sheet. Uh, five tackles, one of them solo. So... Would yeah. like to give a couple mm-hmm. shout outs. Um, one, Joe Alt, just because I love him. That that's really the only that's the only thing there. Um and uh I forgot the other one. So not Stephen Jelly? No, I can't say anything about him because he didn't play. Or did he play? I, I he He did not. My I don't think they did. I, Your broadcast I, I, cut out too? Yeah. I'm so pissed about this. So I don't have cable, but my in-laws have Spectrum, <laughs> so I just use the cable. You know, I just use their cable login, right? Don't shh, don't tell anyone. Um, oh, and um, awesome. I can't watch the freaking game. It's literally like twelve fifty-five, no, eleven fifty-five Eastern, right? And I'm like, I got to figure out how I'm going to watch this game. Uh, and then I just sign up for YouTube TV real quick, and yeah, it's, it, I, I, it cuts out in the last two minutes, but. I had a funny little quip, and I just don't remember it. My other uh, shout out, um, but uh, yeah, singer singer's very good at this YouTube stuff. Uh, by the way, folks, Mike Goolsby show tomorrow, eight PM Eastern time. Like I'm like ninety five percent of that, but if we have to change anything, just follow me on Twitter at Mike T Singer. I will I will make sure you guys know about the status of the Goolsby show. Um, so that'll be really good to hear from him about this just crazy 45 to 24 victory for Notre Dame. Trash says, I love the emotion and trash talk. I mean, your name is trash. Of course you love trash talk. That's, uh, that's going to, that's going to make sense, but yeah, I love to see it. Um, as well, Tom said, this coaching staff makes great, uh, makes game adjustments very well. I'm proud of this whole team. They beat, um, their offense, defense, and special teams. Um, they got an impressive W. The best is yet to come. Go Irish. Tom, really appreciate you. Lotus says, I, I think this is an interesting point. Like, love to see Coach Gino with Hartman after every drive. We missed that with Reese, right? Reese would get on the phone with the quarterback. 
And he would very kindly and gently say, please do your job. I love you so much, Drew Pine. Um, no, no, he would you know, maybe yell a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think that's an interesting element to things, kind of that face-to-face -face connection um, that they can have there. And c -Max says, Mike, anything um, about today really concern you? Because I'm very worried about Freeman playing too many players. Um, no, I'm, I'm definitely not concerned about Freeman playing too many players. I mean, the running back rotation I thought was really good today. Um, I would actually like to see more great house and Tyree. I'm, well, I'm interested to see the snap, the snap counts on Wednesday show with Tim Hyde. We're going to cover the snap counts, um, from this game. Um, so make sure to check out that show Wednesday, 8 PM Eastern time, but no, not really. Kyle, does this, does anything um, concern you? Uh, just, and then in general, no. I guess before Kyle goes, um, maybe, maybe a little bit of interior offensive line. Uh, some of those mistakes, you know, the penalties, but clean those things up. Otherwise, I'm I'm feeling pretty darn good right now. Yeah, as far as uh, the coaching staff playing so many guys, like they're not just playing guys to play them. And like just like Marcus Freeman got a question about this. I think it was Monday presser uh, five days ago or so that someone asked him like. You know, are you do you have in the back of the mind or your mind essentially about guys looking elsewhere, maybe thinking about transfer, transferring, and uh, if they don't see the field? And Marcus's answer was basically like, "We're not going to play guys just to play guys." You know, this is something we talk about with the coaching staff each week. You know, they determined which guys on the roster can help them on game days, and uh, they put those guys on the field. Uh, and I I feel like it's pretty. Uh, pretty fair um the amount of guys like they like their five running backs they're gonna yeah. put those guys in the game now i think we're starting to see that they are liking a little bit um some guys a little bit more than others we saw jadarian price and jeremiah love on the field a lot today compared to jabron Payne. we'll have to verify that with the uh, snap counts but that's just kind of off right. my recollection and then it, um, that adds it, up. In they terms trust of, those. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say that adds up in terms of carries. Price had yeah. seven. Love had six. Payne had four. But they trust those young wide receivers too. They're gonna play those guys. Um, you know, on defense, they're getting a ton of guys involved. But I don't think this is surprising. You know, you got your your three core linebackers that are playing. You got your eight rotating defensive linemen for the most part. Um, the corners. It's the four guys we've expected to see, Jaden Mickey, Cam Hart, Benjamin Morrison, and uh, Christian Gray. The safeties, the guys we were expecting to see, uh, G.J. Brown, Xavier Watts, Antonio Carter, um, you know Thomas Harper playing the nickel. So th these are a lot of guys we've expected to see on game day. So I don't think they're reaching to play guys. They, they feel confident in them getting out there and – I think that, you know, in some of the bigger games this year against Ohio State and um, obviously down the road, USC, Clemson, they might may tighten things up and rely on some of those older guys. But I think it, it's probably a more encouraging sign than anything uh, that they're playing a lot of guys. They're winning. Yeah. They're, they're winning football games. So why, why you know, worry about that? Yeah, yeah. Folks just joining us, uh, or if you have not done so yet, please hit the thumbs up on this video. Um, I, we'll, we're going to wrap up soon, but just kind of lo a look around college football. Uh, Clemson struggled and was 24-17 up against Charleston Southern um, at halftime and then goes crazy in the second half, 66-17. Uh, to 17. Colorado with the with a nice win on the – no, that was at home, 36-14 to 14, um, against Nebraska – um utah going at baylor winning 20 to 13 of course you got your fighting irish 45 24 uh ohio state struggled a little bit early with youngstown's youngstown state i don't know why ohio state ever as our ohio and kyle why does ohio state schedule youngstown state it just seems like a lose lose you blow them out okay cool that's what you're supposed to do it against an fcs team but youngstown state is always a really good fcs team 
Like, I don't even know why they play them. Like, go play, you know, uh, some scrub FCS team. Like, it's when teams schedule North Dakota State. Like, why? Don't schedule the, their Eastern Washington. Don't schedule the top FCS teams. But You're missing the point here, Mike. So, well, actually, I don't know if this is still the case. He might have retired. But uh, Youngstown State's president was former Ohio State head coach Jim Trestle. So, Ohio State giving a... Uh, Throwing a couple extra bucks, Youngstown State's way, play them. So there in state play. school. So yeah, yeah, I love that comment, Kevin. Let me read this one. Let me read this one, Mike. So Kevin Simonson, I hope I pronounced the last night last name said Ohio State friends texting me worried about the Notre Dame game, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it too, Kevin. I got I got a couple friends that are diehard Ohio State fans, and. uh a little bit too confident, in my opinion. So, I've got an Ohio State buddy too, and he—I don't even. Well, buddy, childhood friend, right? And I'm in a fantasy league with him. I haven't seen him in 15 years or something. <laughs> He—I don't think he even knows what I do for a line of work, and he's and, and he's texting with my brothers and stuff, and he's like, "Man, I'm again." He has no idea what I do for a living. Um, I think he knows I work in sports, but not covering Notre Dame. And he's he's texting about how he's worried about Notre Dame, and I'm just sitting myself cracking up. Um, yeah, here comes Notre Dame, man. Three and oh, get Central Michigan at home next week, and then the biggie. Uh, as, as Tim Hyde says, Ohio State, September 23rd. Uh, you looking forward to to being at that one, Kyle? So. Well, that's an interesting question because these primetime games for reporters, as you know, are hell, um, especially for your, your traveling reporters like me. So the atmosphere in those games are awesome. And I think most of our viewers should know, you know, we cover recruiting. So, yes, let's go. I pronounced the name right. Um, so for us recruiting reporters, those are really exciting games to cover because all those guys get to campus and I've hit the road in the Midwest super hard um, over the last two weeks. And I've all I've heard is about everyone that's going to the Ohio State Notre Dame game. Like we have a very extensive list on the loose emoji message board. Like if you're a priority Notre Dame football recruiting target, you're going to be at that Ohio State game. That's where they're sending all their priority guys. They want them at the Ohio State game. Like, there's been recruits that have rearranged their schedule to make yeah. sure that they're at their Ohio State game. So, being uh, right here in Toledo, Ohio, where I am, you know, friends that went to Ohio State, uh, part of my family, diehard Ohio State fans. Like, I'm uh, I'm very excited for that game because, like, last year, where I was thinking Notre Dame could maybe steal one, steal one away from Ohio State. I think this year they can actually beat that team. Cool. Um, well, I think that is just going to about do it. Before you guys go, I just want to make you aware of our show lineup at Blue and Gold. We do five uh, live shows throughout the week. Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern time, uh, Blue and Gold beat writer Tyler Horka. And, uh, I mean, if you – I live in the South Bend area or, or you know, I've followed Notre Dame football for a long time. You know the name Darren Pritchett. So they do that show Mondays, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern time, myself and Tim Hyde. Uh, Hyde will be back this upcoming Wednesday. And then the next morning, you get to see these two lovely faces again. Uh, myself and Kyle Kelly will be live at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. So we'll talk about all of our road travels, uh, preview visit weekend, all the latest uh, news and notes in Notre Dame football recruiting. Of course, Saturdays after the game, myself and usually uh, Tim Hyde, but Tim was out this week. Uh, Kyle did an amazing job filling in. And then Sundays, which will include tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern time, the Mike Goolsby show, former Irish linebacker and captain Mike Goolsby breaking down the game and talking about what's ahead for the fighting Irish. So you're going to want to check that out Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And yeah, if you are new, please do hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Really, really, really do recommend you subscribing and going to blueandgold.com because that is, um, I mean, all of our shows, all of, and that's just, again, the live shows. We do up, recruiting updates on Tuesdays with myself and Darren Pritchett, press conference takeaways with all the latest from what Freeman had to say, and injury updates, so you don't want to miss that. And, of course, our website, blueandgold.com, uh, all the written coverage. 
the amount of content we write is just ridiculous. So you're going to want to get um, to bloomandgold.com and interact with thousands of other Notre Dame fans on our loose emoji message board. Kyle, fantastic job uh, filling in. Head over to blueandgold.com, folks, for more post-game coverage. And as always, we will catch you next time.